I want to start with a poem uh, that it kind of hits the, the heart of my life on the road. It's called Only the Dead. And it starts with this quotation that I used to think was by Plato, and I found out just recently that it's probably not. But, you know, everyone believed it was by Plato until, you know, the internet started putting out more information than we need. So, but the quotation is, only the dead have seen the end of war. Only the dead. Part one, the voice. The sky, too, is concrete, rain whipping cold like a father's belt, and I stand thumb in hand, waiting for that one good ride. This is where it begins, this is where it will end. Western highway fading south, boots lapping up the puddles like thirsty dogs, eyes squinting into the torrent of black, black rain. I am grateful for the weight of my pack and the icy thunder all around. And then the welcome smile of brake lights, and I'm trading stories with a farmer turned trucker, and opening my coat against the heat, and the miles peel away like dollar bills, and the stillness returns, and with it, the haunting words chanced upon in a photograph in our illegal attic. Only the dead have seen the end of war. Sometimes it all comes together to form what we call a moment, and the moments line up like school children to become a memory, cluster of images, fury of autumn leaves. And in this moment, now, it suddenly occurs to me, I have never in my life left a forwarding address. Part two, the cry. America, land of the big backyard and swimming pools, self-induced lobotomies, 31 flavors in neon day glow electric chairs. If only I weren't born within the golden bars of your fourth Reich. If only I weren't born in the shadow of your Roman eagle, I could love my country the way Neruda loved Chile or Kazantzakis loved Greece. But you've made it impossible to separate land from state, people from policy, geography from government. And so to be an American poet is always to be a poet without a country because a poet is nothing if not a teller of truth. And we gather in fields of broken glass we love the weeds that splinter the sidewalk. We, following Whitman, sound our barbaric yawp and wear our hats as we please indoors or out. And everywhere we gather on rooftops drinking rainwater from rusty eaves. Only the dead have seen the end of war, but not all wars are fought with the guns and bombs of the weak desperation of empire, the flag-waving children of Babylon. Sometimes the moon is the only witness to murder, and he would never rat out his friends. Part three, the wilderness. This is where it will end. This is where it begins. Flowers unbloom themselves in muddy progression. The wind picks up, and all I want is another cup of coffee. I started with that poem because it um, it illustrates why I wrote this book and on a number of levels. But on the most basic level, um, I, I read that poem that I wrote probably 20 years ago or God knows when. Um, and there's all these little references there. You know, the farmer turned trucker who was a guy named, his actual name was Sai. But in the book, he's Clyde. And I've written about him several times all over the place. He's always Clyde in, when I write about him, you know. And he, he picked me up twice hitchhiking, which never happens. Same guy pick you up more than once. Um, that's when you know you've been out there a lot. <laughs> but, uh, you know, he, he entered into kind of the mythology of my, of my writing, of my road, my road poetry. Um, and so here's this little reference, a farmer turned trucker, but I'm like, but wait, there's a story behind that that I'd like to tell people. Um, and, and just that quotation, only the dead have seen the end of war. And what do you mean you're illegal at it? What the hell are you talking about? You know, well, so I wanted to tell the story of Symposia, this unheated you know, squat that we lived in in, in Minnesota through a, one of the most brutal Minnesota winters that anyone remembers. Um, and you know, we had this little place we called Symposia, 
Um, and one day this, this picture showed up on the wall of a magazine cover and it said, only the dead have seen the end of war. And I thought, oh, oh Jesus, that's, you know. Um, and and even, even the reference to another cup of coffee because before setting out on this road with the rain whipping cold, um, I was on M46 heading across Michigan. It was one of those, you know, like October, November, brutal, icy rainstorms blasting you in the face. And I was thinking, God, you know, earlier today I was in the Red Eye Coffee House in Saginaw having this really nice cup of coffee. Maybe I should have stayed for a second cup. You know, so the idea was there were, there were stories behind the poems that I wanted to tell. Um, and that kind of led to the idea of the structure for the book being um, inspired by Basho and his haibun, which were uh, combinations of poetry and prose. With him it was haiku and prose, but his travel logs, his, his journeys, um, narrow road to the deep north, uh, the, what were they, the, the, something like the, the records of a weather-exposed skeleton, these great titles, you know. Um, so I wanted to continue in that sort of a tradition, to, to blend the poetry with the prose. In the reading tonight, you probably won't notice so much when I'm jumping from poetry to prose. You might, I don't know, it doesn't matter though. Uh, it's all the same story. 